Good morning, Guam, and welcome to my show, uh, Group Chat. My name is Chris Barnett. Thanks for starting your day, the KUAM way, and our starting lineup uh, weekday morning shows. Uh, we're here in Atantanu uh, with Joe Kanata from the Guam Preservation uh, Trust. Good morning, Joe. Good morning. Half a day, Guam. And so we're here, uh, you know, our, our, our co-worker, uh, Tomas McGlutney, did a really cool story about this heritage trail um, that was basically cleared by a bunch of sociology students from the University of Guam, and I thought that was the coolest thing. Yes, uh, we have this project called Healthy Communities. Heritage Communities are Healthy Communities, and all because uh, Tech Care Foundation had given us a grant uh, to develop that, to, to look at our heritage and to look at, at how we can be healthy. Uh, so we developed this trailblazing project. It's, it's a really neat project because we're going into the first trail that's going into Atantano. So uh, this, is, this is going to be done at different uh, sites? So it's, we hope to do it at different sites. We hope to do it in a couple of areas here in Atantano. We're looking at 70 hectares of property. So that's a lot of space, a lot of space that we can work with and develop trails in and out uh, of the main trail of which we have developed. Uh, and the, the students from the university, they answered our call and they're all women and they're all from the sociology department. So I, I like to give kudos to uh, to that professor that um, recommended this, uh, and they're done. They're, they basically did the trail all the way where we uh, we have proposed to do it. Nice. I don't know where the guy students were at, but uh, hey, you know, the future is from Alaon, I guess. Exactly. And uh, you see their work as we go in. Right. Uh, let's uh, talk about, just a little backstory here on this uh, property. We we're talking before uh, we went live. Uh, 70 hectares that was uh, donated to the Guam Preservation Trust uh, from Shell. That's pretty cool. Yes, about uh, almost five years ago, uh, before Shell had uh, left Guam, they needed to divest their assets. And, and one of their biggest assets really is this 70 hectares of property. Uh, and they were looking for uh, somebody, some organization to, to receive it. And the Guam Preservation Trust uh, was lucky to to uh, to get this this property, we are developing the property as a heritage preserve, and this trail is going to open that door. We're going to invite people in to vision with us, to talk to us, and and say, hey, you know, uh, so far we've been getting really very good uh, responses from from the women that came in here, and they say, hey, let's have a sort of a, a real lunch in here, so people can. People that don't have a lunch or a ranch can feel that they right. do have one here. Yeah. Uh, you know what, what I thought was really cool is one of the things you told me about this, this property and this heritage trail is that eventually, uh, we're not there yet, but down the, the road you want to uh, kind of open it up because there, there are a bunch of laddie sites in here. So there are 17 uh, sets uh, that were identified. There could be more, uh, but those were identified by an earlier uh, uh, survey that was done right. for the Shell company. Uh, I know that Shell had uh, planned something really big at this area. Uh, they did assessments from environmental assessments all the way to cultural, uh, cultural resource assessments. And after those, at the results of that, uh, they decided that they're not going to do anything with it. It's just too precious. It's it's a gem, and uh, it's, so wait it's, a minute. You're telling me that a multinational. Uh, corporation came here and wanted to do a big expansion but when they discovered uh, you know cultural and historical uh, artifacts and sites they pulled the plug on the whole thing yes including natural I mean uh, the, the natural area right. uh, because you have uh, Atantano River that runs through so you have wetlands and and the cost to develop a wetland is is tremendous right. so so you're looking at cost when you're looking at business uh, so they decided that it, you know, it's 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 not the right thing to do. And I, I think that's uh, pretty interesting, especially given the current conversation. That uh, I mean, everybody knows that there's a lot of discussion on the buildup and the things that are happening uh, beyond the the baseline. So I think it's important that we uh, take these sites and we uh, honor them and we preserve them. And so you know, kudos to you guys. I mean, that's great. Yes, it's you know everybody's talking about. Uh, uh, how they miss, they're going to miss a lot of these historic areas, how, how do these heritage sites. Well, Atantano is one big heritage site. It, it's, it's something that we should all together work together and preserve it and, and, and really just get our kids especially 
to come and experience the sights. And yeah, we're gonna go on this uh, trail, but uh, if you're wondering how to get here, uh, Gresco, probably showing our age, if you know where Gresco is, you, you pass Pizza Hut and uh, Agate. It's the second uh, left, and you come on in, you can see the little uh, trail markers here. And so uh, you're encouraging, like, the, you're right, get healthy, uh, see a heritage uh, trail. And, uh, and I think that's uh, really cool that people can just come here and take a hike. Yes. Literally. Uh, you know, we, we encourage people to come in here. It is, though, at your own risk, uh, but it's, it's a very, very easy, uh, I would say, between easy and medium hike. There's not, there's, it's, compared to Pagat, this is really candy. Uh, Jason's wearing his dress shoes. That's how candy this is going to be. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> he's got his church shoes on, so he's going to be okay. Yeah. <laughs> so he'll be okay. Sunday yeah. best. Right. The, the, the women did such a great job. It's like walking into a carpet. Right, yeah. And so let's uh, go ahead and take a stroll in here. Uh, you know, Joe, you talk about this historical and... Uh, uh, heritage uh, trail and the, and the area having a uh, you know cultural and natural significance can you kind of just run down what what makes this at Ant uh, Tantano area historically significant for uh, you know from a Chamorro perspective everything Chamorro is in this land uh, when you look at the river you look at the, the shrimp the fish you look at the the breadfruit the mango trees that you're going to be seeing there uh, coconuts even bitternut uh, trees are there. Uh, everything is there as, as we call Chamorro right. in our natural setting. And then in our cultural setting, we look at the uh, Lati sets, we look at the Lati period, uh, and we also can, can say, you know, that they did some farming here before the war, and we'll show you some places where they could have done that. Wow. Uh, so everything Chamorro is in this property. And you know what I what I thought was interesting in um, talking to you before is, uh, like I said, down the road, eventually we want this heritage trail to go by these laddie sites. Uh, but you want to make it really interactive and actually involve people who go on this trail uh, in the studying and the archaeological work that's going to be going on at these sites. Yes, we're going to uh, bring in some specialist people that know about these sites more in detail. Uh, to do sort of like a guided tour. Right. So, and that's what we did with the, with the project itself. We had people from the sustainability office at the University of Guam. Uh, we had a specialist, Elsa. Right. She that's was awesome. really good right. with, yeah. with the plants. Uh, then we had uh, uh, Chris uh, Farron from Forestry come in here, and she just did a really good job uh, teaching uh, the women, you know, about the forest area. And, and so these type of people are willing to, to take other people in and, and guide them in to show them the, the beauty of this place. And they're very passionate. I mean, I know both those uh, women that you're talking about, and they're very passionate about uh, what they do. And I, and I think what's cool about Elsa and uh, Chris is that it really translates to people they talk to, you know? And I mean, uh, a lot of times forestry, uh, ecology, maybe to some people not the most interesting subjects, but they make a good sell and they, they really uh, let you see and make you excited about finding things because you see how passionate they are. Right, and when they're in their setting, you see everything come out of, right. with them. So, so when they're talking in the classroom, it's, it's going to be kind of boring. Right. Uh, but when you're in their setting, they can pick up a leaf and they can say, this is invasive. They can pick up another leaf or uh, touch a tree and say, this is native or this is endemic. You know, or uh, this one we want to get rid of because right. it's it's uh, it's just causing havoc in in our in our forest. So when the women are here, when these specialists are here, it's the the it's more meaningful. Right. Not only to the participants. Hey, you're not too here. shabby, though, Joe. I gotta tell right. you. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 also uh, and also to uh, especially to them because we all get excited about right. this stuff and right. this is what we do. And I mean, I, I love that uh, you have activities like this because, uh, I mean, there's no doubt we're going through a renaissance uh, in Guam. Uh, you know, everybody is, is trying to reconnect with the way things used to be. And here we have something that is going to be interactive down the road. But uh, for now, I mean, you look for things to do with the kids. It's summer. This is a great activity. Yeah, you know, people say, oh, we're going through a renaissance. So, you know, we, 
we it was it was always here yeah things are always here. it was the it was really social media and uh, technology right. that made it seem like oh we're just starting it right yeah. <laughs> but it's always been here sure. uh thanks to organizations like the 4-h the boy scouts and you know uh the youth clubs in the different mayors right. uh offices that that do these type of things and you know i was actually uh i'm an uh, alumni of 4-h and we used to do things like go out here and uh, you know, go into the jungle and uh, talk about resource uh, management. But, you know, that's right. You bring up a good point with social media. And I feel like especially with the uh, uh, generation that's coming up now, uh, I say renaissance because to a lot of them, everything is beginning again. But you're right. I mean, you've been here. You've been doing this work. Yes. Yes. Ever since I was little, uh, my dad used to be in my shoe in, in some respect. And uh, and I used to be the, the, the kid following him right. and listening to him and actually interacting with with the nature and interacting with the uh, elders to to do what it takes and let's uh i mean if you see you've seen anything of interest here to point out while we're on this uh, trail you know please do your thing okay so you're going to see a lot of pandanus uh, these are pandanus trees And you're going to see a lot of these trees, and they are, they are just going at it. Uh, they're reproducing so much. Um, it, it it seems like they're they're sort of traveling into because they were at once uh, coastal plants, and they've now come into the forest. And so these walk. Or I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> they're going where the water is. They actually have legs. <laughs> right. Uh, and so you have these rooted legs, and these actually make them. Uh, make them survive in this wetland area. Right. That that way, all of the everything above is everything is above water. So, so uh, it's amazing how these these sort of evolve into the forest. And what's the historical significance of uh, pandanus? Of course, pandanus is used for uh, for weaving. Right. Uh, you have the the agak they call it mm -hmm. uh, in Chamorro. And we use it and only because my mom was a master weaver. Right. And of course, the sons would, would prepare the leaves. Right. And so we go into the forest and the jungle and we would cut the leaves and remove their, their, uh, their thorns. Right. And then she takes care of the rest. But uh, you, have, uh, you have... What about that. eating that, that pineapple-looking uh, fruit at the top? Is there any... Do people do that? Yes. In fact, you, when, in, in fact they're right down there. We used to use these so as uh, comes, grenades. This comes in a big bowl. They come in a big bowl, and when they fall, they they just come apart. But you you cut this open. I didn't bring a machete with me, but you right. cut this open, and there's a nut in it, and it tastes like almonds. They're really great. Wow, They're really good. So you can eat that raw. Yes. Nice. Well, maybe we can go up to Manila and get a machete. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Joe. <laughs> then you have an invasive, uh, an invasive plant, which is really good because the the way it smells. Have you ever tried root beer? Right. Yeah. So is this sassafras? Yes. Nice. Yep. Just it's like invasive, but it's a good smelling invasive. Yes. Yeah, Unfortunately, a, Facebook doesn't have smell of vision Not yet. Oh, there you well, all, all you have to do is open a can of root beer, and, and you can smell like. exactly mm -hmm. the same thing. Oh, so that's Barks. Yes. <laughs> barks and Mug hasn't got anything on that. <laughs> Joe, I got to ask you, I mean, the Tautamona like me, but are, are we okay to go into this area? And You know, uh, I came in earlier, and the first thing I did when I came here was ask for permission. Right. And every time you come into this area, and we will have a sign out there that you have to in in your own language, in your own way, in your own thoughts, uh, that you are coming into a sacred area and that you have to ask permission and ask for, you know, to, to educate you as right. you go in. Right. And so, uh, so I did that when we first came in here. Nice, so we're covered. Yes. <laughs> do, you wanna, do you wanna say it now, like on the, on the live stream? Yeah, let's just, you, uh, you know, if you wanna show people how to properly ask uh, permission. Well, uh, in, in Chamorro, we say "guala zanguelo, kosinya hit malofan, kitanok miso, zon na li ham ni itanok mo." This is the extended version. Right. Zakumu matu hawgi itanok mami, 
Phalnophanhasemamaisen. And it means uh, ancestors or our, our spirits. Uh, we are entering and we'd like to ask permission to enter into your, your spirit world uh, and to show us and educate us. And if you do come into our world, you can come in without asking permission. Nice. And so uh, basically respect uh, really is a key for those yes. uh, people who aren't, uh, you know, from Guam. Maybe they see something like this and they go, what? Do you have spirits in the jungle? What the hell are you talking about? But <laughs> it really is uh, to respect the way of life of uh, the people who came before us. Exactly. Uh, w when, you, when you say those words or when you think those words, it, it, what it does is it puts you in a mindset. It puts you in a mindset that your intention to come in here is not other than to learn. Right. Yeah. Don't go. Don't go hashing in this area. Exactly. Don't bring your mountain bikes or your three wheelers, four wheelers. Right, how right. many wheelers in? Right. Uh, we we want to respect the place here. Uh, just take memories with you. We had a comment here from uh, Javen. This is so amazing that I didn't know where this was when he was staying here in this area as a kid. And and you're right. I mean, I've driven by this area. I mean, thousands and thousands of times. Uh, you know, I've been to that uh, Atantano Shrine over there, but I really never thought to come into this area. Mm -hmm. and it's it's crazy how you can have something right under your nose, but never realize it. Yes, and all it takes is a bunch of women, <laughs> great women, right, with machetes, to, with machetes <laughs> to come in and and show us the way. Nice. So let's go keep walking. Yes. And so, Joe, when we talk about our our ancestors, what um types of things were they doing when they were uh, living in this this area so uh, this area where we're at right now all the way uh, it, it's called the wetland area uh, only because the river runs through it right, we have the river here um, and the river runs through it that was a great movie by the way that was a great movie <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know they, they do their harvesting they do all of their they will catch their shrimp, shrimp and, right. and the fish that's there uh, so this is where they gather, they hunt and gather. Uh, they don't live here because uh, it's not a great place to live because when you have your floods, the floods would overflow and the Plus water... Plus there's plenty of mosquitoes. Too. That too. <laughs> <laughs> and so here we have uh, the river, like you said, they would be shrimping, maybe shrimp keleguin. Yep, there is uh, imatang, there is uh, lots of other right. animals that are down there. And so further so introduced, <laughs> further inland is where you would find the uh, laddie sites, and that's where they would live. Yes. So you go up to the savanna area. Right. And so Atantano actually provides all the habitats that you can find on Guam. It's here in this in this area. That's interesting. So all the different habitats exist, coexist in this one area. So you can, if if you're doing field study, uh, this is a great area for uh, people to come to. And again, I mean emphasize that's why it's also a great area to preserve yes so we have a memorandum of agreement with the university of guam rare plant program uh we're going to be working with them to sort of uh, put uh, an anglet fence so that we can start propagating ro uh, rare plants you do have some rare plants here in atantano um, and that's why we we uh, we're very careful um, when you come in here that you don't pull or take plants with you. Unless it's root beer, root beer plants. <laughs> Even the root beer plants, because they're invasive. If right. you, they'll go all, all over your, your right. house if you try to plant it. Um, but we, we don't want you to take the plants out because this is where they live. If you try to propagate those plants outside, they're not gonna make it. Right, yeah, and that's one thing about uh, you know trees and plants is they thrive in their habitat. And, and you're right, and we see that in, in efforts that uh, people make to try and uh, grow things that are used to one habitat yeah. in another area. Yeah, in their garage or right. in yeah. in their in their patio area, and that's that's not a really good place to plant trees that you brought out from from the forest. Right. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah, Joe, I, I'm asking on behalf of my nana because you know she passed several years ago and everything, but she would probably have me ask. Um, you know, we've already properly asked uh, permission to enter this place of our of our Tatamona ancestors and everything. But once people are in here, um, are there any kind of you know respect or rules as far as like making noise because my nana would always say okay you know it's one thing to ask to ask permission to come in and then when you go in there don't bring your speakers you know don't laugh too loud and everything like that because you still have to show respect are, are there rules about that yes they are especially on the riverside the the river area is is most highly and and uh the, the pasadero where they walk 
Yes, so, so when you're walking next to the river, you have to be quiet. Uh, I'm not saying that if you're not in the river that you can get your boombox out, but, but it is a place, it, sh it, sh it shouldn't be a place for a disco. Yeah. So don't bring your boombox. <laughs> uh, and if you, want, if you want to listen to music as you go on, then get your earbuds. Right. Uh, they're the best thing. But you know, actually, I, I would just say, come and enjoy the silence. I mean, so much of our life is noise, nice. meaningful in other words, and, and I feel like it's nice and peaceful and, and yeah. quiet. And you, and you feel safe. Yeah. You do feel safe here. And I know what Jason's saying, just because you ask permission to come into this area doesn't mean that you, you got a, a green light to go all crazy. <laughs> yes. Uh, it, it, like I said earlier, it, it's a mindset that you put on, and that mindset is respect. Right. And you know, if you're quiet in here, then you could hear the wild pig coming after you. So you got a, you got a head start. Well, actually, actually, the wild pigs would would sense you before you even get close to them, so they 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 leave. They're they're more scared of us than than we are them. But if you do come across them by surprise, don't provoke them because right. they will go after you. Yeah, because they're very territorial. Yes. How about the mosquitoes, Chris? For just for yeah. people who may want to come down here. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to zoom in on like right. nose yeah. and neck. Yeah. Yeah. There's quite yeah. a lot of mosquitoes. So you know, we 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 want you to to prepare yourself when you come in. Make sure you bring a, a good a jug of water uh, so you can hydrate yourself. Um, the mosquitoes are always going to be around. Right. Uh, Don't be a panty. Right, and uh, <laughs> and because it's apparently a, it's I have a, it's sweet a, blood. Now. They're, they're, they're loving. Me. They love you, Jay. yeah. Oh, so, uh, so some of us, uh, yeah, some of us just don't. Uh, we, we don't. We don't. I guess we're used to it, and I don't even feel they're, it. They're used to us that right. they don't hit us. Um, and so we're here at this uh, kind of. This is a really nice uh, view. I know you got this, Jay, with the sunlight coming through, uh, the pandanus trees. And what kind of tree is this right here? Okay, so this tree here that you see, I, I, you know, it's got a scientific name. Uh, I don't know its name because it's not a Guam tree. It's invasive. It's invasive. Never mind. <laughs> it's an invasive tree. Never mind. Then. And so we're going to be working with the forestry department. Uh, we're actually doing some, uh, we're talking right now, we're doing some uh, introduction to native uh, plants in, in Atantano and also taking care of some of the invasive plants that are here. So uh, as far as invasive uh, species, you know, plants and, and animals, what's the biggest threat uh, to this um, heritage area? So when, when, when you look at the invasive uh, trees especially, uh, you have to understand the different tiers in, in, in the forest. So you have, your, you have your first tier, which is your shrubs, which are your shrubs. And these actually grow underneath got lucky he got yeah. good on that. What, what, what do you got there bro <laughs> i hope it's ugan well let me see yeah it is look, look, look. it is ugan oh it is yeah Ooh. <laughs> well, let, me, let me see your teeth not yet not yet not yet <laughs> so he, he's salivating right now yeah. but <laughs> but uh so so you have your your first tier which is your your uh shrubs and your grass and all of that and they grow very well underneath this canopy then you have your pandanus, and that's your next tier. Right. Uh, and then you have your canopy, and these are those, the, the trees that the grow trees. huge. Right. Um, and so when, when, you, when, when you look at how the ecology of it happens, if you do take down these canopies, uh, the, the next tier is going, to, is going to grow up and become a canopy. Wow. So we want to be able to, before we take care of the invasive trees we want to first plant our native trees to take over those invasive trees we don't want to destroy the invasive tree and, and you're just left with a bald right. forest right yeah. exactly and then everything dies so we want our native trees first to uh, to grow and then take down the invasive trees you know what i appreciate too is uh we talk about blazing the trail uh and these uh, women students from uog did that but they did it in a way that um, it's not like they bulldozed their way in here. It was done with care and with yes. respect to the environment. So they, they were they were uh, uh, they were introduced to uh, to the plants that are important, and some plants that they can they can cut off, and some right. plants just grow rapidly, uh, and so they're able to do that with care. And uh, you know, for those people watching again, uh, just to refresh you, where we're in the Gresco uh, area, what's known as the the Gresco area, and you just you just uh, pass. This is another great view. 
You just uh, pass, uh, you know, Pizza Hut, the Taco Bell here in uh, Agon. It's the second uh, left, and it's a really easy hike. Like I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm taking the kids here. Maybe you know we're off Fourth of July, so yes, you know to come on in here, and, and they love to go out and, uh, you know, the beach. We do a lot of beach stuff, but uh, jungle hiking. That's something that. Uh, we want to do especially in this area because you made it so family friendly yes and uh it's it's just a very easy hike uh i mean i would say easy to medium right this uh, isn't like dave lott's material this is just like exactly. beginner level <laughs> <laughs> novice <laughs> dave lott's would probably not want to take his people here He's like oh this is too easy <laughs> this is like going to be a primer for dave dave yeah, lott's like people right walk yeah. in the park this is what this is. <laughs> yes so but it, it, it 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 lends uh it lends much better uh, much better uh, view than some of Dave Lotz's, uh hikes, and you know, not as uh, difficult too. So, what what are what do we got coming up here, uh, Joe? What's the lay of the land like? So, uh, what we're doing is we're we're not we're still following the river, and once we get into we call it our break tent. Uh, once we get into that break tent, then we 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 get to go up to the savanna area. And so it's about a 20 minute uh, hike into the savannah? Uh, yeah, all the way up to the savannah. And again, if Jason Solis can do this in um, church shoes, then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm be donating these right. afterwards because I, I don't think I'll be using these again for Right. <laughs> hey, save them for our next hike. <laughs> Okay, now Joe, that being the case, um, Chris is a way better hiker than I am, um, uh -huh. but I'm, I'm going to ask on, on behalf of the people that could get lost, right, if it would be very easy to take in, you know, the splendor and the beauty of, you know, of this amazing place, and like Chris said, you can appreciate the silence, but by the same token, it's probably really easy to lose your way. Yes. If you should be out here with a small group or, you know, God forbid, by yourself and everything like that, and you have no idea how to get back, how, what's the easiest way to, to find your way back? The easiest way to find your way back, there are two ways. One is, are these tags. So you see these tags that, uh, that you know, they're, they're visible uh, in like long ways that right. you can see the tags. G uh, get to the tags and, and that's how you find your way back. The other way is to look for the river. Right. And the river, you get the river and go follow the river downwards and you will get to the road. And that was just one of the things when me and my cousins, you know, growing up in Maleso, also Windward Hills, we would just disappear after we finish our chores on Saturday. We'd uh, have a gallon of water uh, frozen in the deep freeze and we'd get some of the ship biscuit and we'd just go out into the jungle and we'd always end with that. We'd just like, okay, follow the river yeah. and, you know, I mean, it's going to lead you to the ocean. Or... See, that's the difference between you and right. me. Me and my cousins will go to the mall and we play video games. <laughs> We're just trying to get out of the house because, you know, you're in the house and grandparents are always going to find something for you to do. So. Exactly, <laughs> yes. Right, yeah. And so you're right. I mean, I guess to avoid getting lost, stay on the trail. Yes. Uh, look for the tags, the fluorescent tags, or go to the river. And we're coming up on the, the break tent here, Joe. I don't know if we have enough time to go all the way to the savannah. We do? Oh, we will. Okay, cool. So we will. As long as we got a signal, we're good. So here's uh, the break tent that they made, and this is a uh, pretty cool, a little shady. You know, fortunately, it's not really that hot today. It's never hot in the in, in the, the wetland because oh, nice. the canopies were, right. Well, uh, so normally everybody would sit would sit up there. <laughs> Gravity works down here too. Everybody sits up here, but everybody Joe's cool, so he goes and, down there. And then the, the speaker. Right. Would stand here and talk to everybody. Nice. And everybody's looking at the river. Nobody's so paying attention to the speaker. Right. They're all the looking at the river. Distracting them. And look at the water's nice and clear. And so you would take a when you take a biscuit and you throw it down, all the fish would come out. Nice. What kind of fish we got in there? Uh, I don't know exactly, but I know your skipjack. They got skipjack. No. <laughs> Manioc. You know everything from. Maybe tilapia is too. Right. Too, 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 too. I don't think there's any yellow fin over here. No. Not today. <laughs> hey, Joe, so when you, when you talk about um, one of the things that a, that a speaker would do, so a guided tour, right? I mean, for me, yes. I'm good, you know, because I've talked to the man, Mr. Joe Kanata, about everything that's going on here. But uh, for those people who 
uh, maybe a class activity or, you know, something they want to organize, like maybe a guided tour of uh, what you have going on down here. How can they do that? Well, they, they can either call myself or call the forestry folks or call the sustainability office. They, they know the trail. They know what's down here. Um, or call, call our, our, our office. We can be able to make that arrangement. Yeah, and I'll tell you, Joe is definitely um, willing to make arrangements. I mean, I called him late yesterday afternoon for this uh, tour, and he was like, shoot, I'll meet you there at 830. And, you know, Sabrina also uh, said, hey, you call Joe. Joe is like, I'll meet you there. Let's do it right now. So uh, definitely very accessible. You know, uh, there's a reason for that is is that I use you guys as a, uh, an excuse to get to the, the place <laughs> get out of the I, office that I truly am passionate right, about. Right. So he's like, hmm, stay in the air con or go out in the take field? A, take a break from work and blame KUM. Right, there right, you go. Let's do that. <laughs> and so you guys actually um, have a lot of stuff uh, going on right now. I mean, I know that we, we kind of talked briefly about it, and uh, but there are actually some students uh, here from a or students and professors from a university in uh, Spain are here in Guam. Yes. Uh, so we've been doing this. This is our, this is our third year, uh, and they're working with, uh, with the... Uh, the students down in Humatak, and uh, they're actually doing some excavation work to study the architecture of Spanish structures in Humatak, uh, and so it's it's going really well. Uh, when you get down there, the the Humatak kids are able to explain to you the history of that area. Uh, it's situated right in front of uh, F.Q. Sanchez School, the old church, Santa right. Church ruins. Yeah. And so that's something that I definitely want to go down and, uh, you know, do a story on, maybe talk to some of the, the people down there. And I really think that's cool. And I know you do it with uh, other programs with um, your division, uh, which is getting the kids. I mean, everybody talks about starting them young. Uh, you're a great example of that. You get these kids in here to, you know, I mean, studying archaeology, studying history, studying uh, the environment. And it's almost like you. You said you're out here with your dad. Yeah, and it's something uh, that stuck with you that became a lifetime yeah. passion. The, the best way to teach a child is to bring them to the environment. Uh, that's the only way to teach. To teach them in the classroom, uh, that's one way, but not right. quite an effective way. But and and it's difficult to when you, when you're dealing with the masses, and that's what you have to do. But if there are any opportunities to take the kids out, it's this is the only way. So we every time we do a program. With the trust, we always have a sort of a youth component to it, right. because we they're they're the ones that are going to take over. Right. Yeah. Whether you like it or not. Yes. <laughs> and so we want to make it. We want we want we want them to know what we've done, so that we can uh, they can take over. Joe, so I don't know if it's just me, but I'm starting to notice that the terrain is uh, changing a little bit. Yes. So we're heading up to the savanna area. So when we get to the savanna area, or just leading up to it, you're going to see the landscape is changing, the plants are changing, the trees have changed, and uh, the mosquitoes haven't changed though. And the mosquitoes <laughs> actually, actually they start. You don't see, you, you don't get much mosquitoes in the savanna area right. because they're oh, not. There are no much. canopies. And so th this kind of area, I mean, this is something you're right. We're going to the sub the Sabana and doing hiking. Uh, this is what it looks like in the, the kind of like drier areas, right? Yes. So um, you're going to come across these sages, these uh, grass that you right. have here. Right. Uh, they grow well. Um, then of course uh, you have the noni, the lada, and then you have uh, lots of ferns different types of ferns. You have the orchids that are out here. Invasive? It is unfortunately an invasive orchid. But we, we do have native orchids and they're, they're actually perched on the trees. Okay. And so what color are those? Uh, they're sort of not as colorful as uh, the invasive orchids, but the invasive orchids are good. Right. They're, they're nice, they're beautiful. Yeah, I mean, you can, you can take care of that. You just come and pick them all for your chick and then boom, problem solved. And this is this plant, this is our Belen plant. This is what they would take to uh, to decorate their nativities at the, right. uh, 
during Christmas. It's also uh, Andrew it's Jamaro fun. pipe cleaner. Yeah. Right, it kind of feels like a <laughs> pipe cleaner. So, Joe, I know you, you spend a lot of time in the jungle, right? And I got to ask you, because I've had an experience where I felt like the Taltamonas made me get lost for a little bit because maybe the people I was with weren't being as respectful as I could. And this happened in uh, Ia. And in Iran, we're in Ia, and we parked right next to the road, went in, I mean, not even five minutes in, couldn't find our way out. Kept going in circles, and it wasn't until we apologized to our ancestors that, you know, I mean, lo and behold, boom, a minute later, yeah. oh my God, there's the road, there's the truck. So I know you're real careful, but have you have you witnessed that type of thing? Have you have you seen those kind of things? I, I uh, Every time I go down to Pagat, I would get this very, very strong force of, uh, uh, whatever it is, uh, I I feel that there's some spirits down there that that uh, are taking care of me. Um, uh, all the time I was hiking down to Pagat, I didn't realize that I had a I had a artery that was clogged. Wow. I could have had a heart attack. Right. So do you believe you have a, a friend? Exactly. I have lots of friends. <laughs> I, have, I have friends in Atantano, <laughs> and they're walking right next to me as we right. speak. <laughs> Yeah, so definitely this is a, a drier uh, terrain. Yeah, it is. And then we're we're going to head out uh, through through these uh, through these wooded areas. We're going to head out to open, much more open area. Open meaning hot. Yes. And so uh, we talk about the. I mean, I don't even want to say manpower because it was uh, women that did it, but. Uh, how many hours of work are we we're talking about? Was this stretched over a few weekends or? Yeah, you know? we, we it was a two week project, and we come in at eight o'clock, and we leave before maybe about eleven o'clock, so maybe about three to four hours a day. Uh, but you know, we just take it easy. Yeah. Uh, we talk a lot. We laugh a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we chatter a lot, and and but but the work continues. Hey, so with the trail, so it, it, it does take us through these different areas, but what, was there any thought that went into the layout of the trail? Yes, uh, what we wanted people to to learn is uh, the different habitats first. Oh, I see. You know, and then from the different habitats, the trail actually is going to eventually lead us to some cultural resource areas. Nice. And that's, uh, you know, we pretty amazing, 17... Uh, laddie sites in this area that um, eventually down the road that's your long-term goal is to to make this a place where you go on these heritage uh, trails and uh, you're able to see these sites and you're able to speak with archaeologists and people who are studying these sites uh, what's the timeline on that well we're, we're, we're looking at uh, uh, every year that we're going to have something every summer we're going to have something uh, if if the university wants to do something during during their their school days, then then that's 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 a bonus for us. Right. Uh, but every summer we're going to be coming up with with uh, extending the trail or making other trails. Right. And so uh, these these seventeen laddie sites. Um, I know we can't get to them now, but just, just describe, if you will, like a couple of them. What what kind of state are they in? So you know they're in their. Of course, their their natural state that uh, they've deteriorated over the the hundreds of years. Right. Uh, they're not the big ones that you see at Fena or at the Lati Park. Right. But they're they're pretty you know they're pretty prominent. You know some of them are standing, but most of them are fell. Uh, so these aren't the high rise uh, Lati. No. <laughs> <laughs> these are one story Lati. Remember, this is the savanna area, so they had to. Have, they have to have carried everything up here. All oh, right. Uh, so we're able to find some uh, lusons that are basalt, and oh, nice. there are no basalts here. Wow. Uh, so. So what kind of community do you think um, inhabited this this area? So, in, uh, Savannah. You're, you know, uh, way before uh, the coast really was where everybody, where where the coast is where where the people would live. Right, because the fishing. And... Yes, and then. When population grew and and technology, you know, with tools and stuff, uh, people are able to move inland. Mm. Uh, but when they move inland, they have to make sure that 
they do have some water supply. Right. And so Atantano River was a great water supply. Right. And uh, and that's why they're here. And so, uh, what about the the height of the ladder? You know, we see we see taller ladders in other places around the island. Why are are these ones not as um, tall, if you will, I guess, as you a, know, other places? Uh, I, I wish I could answer that question. Right. Uh, we still have not really studied the latte in in its full. Um, uh, there are a lot of questions. There are a lot of theories. Right. Uh, but we have not had any much answer. Maybe it's something simple, like after carrying everything so far inland, they didn't want to have to like walk up two flights of stairs to put it in the house. <laughs> you know, I was thinking, even <laughs> even if you walked a uh, lati a foot right. for that day, that's, that's good it. enough right. because there's really we don't have PTO meetings. Right, there are no yeah. soccer games. Right, yeah. You know, that's just good for the f whole five years. So we're uh, in the savanna. This is kind of like the savanna. Yes. And there's a mango tree over there. And that's our ending our trail. And so you can see uh, that's Cross Island Road up there. Right. That's Cross Island Road. And then Tata Corporation is up here. Nice. And so, Joe, I would definitely want to thank you for uh, taking us on this hike. And tell us a little bit about uh, this area because I feel like you want to. Yeah, I mean, so, so uh, if you can imagine, this would have been a great place to live. The, the breeze is here, right. the river is right down the stream, it's a good place to grow things. And when you see a mango tree, that means there was something, something that had happened here. Right, yeah. Because uh, mango trees just don't grow anywhere. Right. Uh, so this was inhabited back then, maybe post-war uh, or pre-war, because the mango tree is here. So I'm pretty sure we're, we're stepping on all kinds of history uh, in this area, both uh, ancient and then, like you said, pre-war. Yes, uh, it is. It is a rich, a rich place. It's highly significant area. Uh, and as you go further down this way, uh, that's where the laddie sets are going to be. And that's going to be another year, which right. is hopefully next year. Oh, hey, baby steps. Yes, yes. And, uh, but we invite everybody to come and take the hike. And to sort of vision, vision what it could be. Because when you start visioning what it could be, it will be. There you go. Thank See you. it and be it. Uh, Joe, thank yes. you so much for taking us on this hike. Don't go Thursday. I'm bringing the kids here. Okay? <laughs> we don't want to come and there's going to be like 8,000 people. Hiking. <laughs> but it is summer. Again, uh, it's the second left. You take the turn in from Gresco, and uh, you're going to pass. That's a little like a... Uh, Bridge. bridge right and then it's right on the a small bridge yes. small bridge you You'll pass that it, yeah. right and there's a huge helitai that lives out there yes so. exactly we just saw one just pass uh, went across the it went across the street early this morning because uh he knew that we were coming in right, when we get back go. to the office we'll put the google maps link on there yeah. yeah right there you go so uh thank you again joe and hey uh, come on by it's the uh, atantanu uh, heritage trail a project that's uh you know, in the works with the Guam Preservation uh, Trust. And, uh, you know, thank you again, Joe, for all the great work you do. And uh, thank you for sharing this uh, Facebook Live with us. You're welcome. All right. Uh, my name is Chris. This has been Group Chat. Joss! Adios.